guess what? This is a Christmas series. And today we're going to chill with Kai Kamara. We're going to tell you all we to need for know about in career and about in life. Stay tuned. Hi, nice meeting you. Nice to meet you too and welcome. Thank you yes. for having me. Um, so, how do you come to Good, good. I then enjoy myself small, small. Okay. Yeah. So, how do you see the Christmas mood? The Christmas mood looks gloomy, right? Yeah, but you know, people, they really they enjoy themselves. The traffic is bad. I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> true, yeah. That's true. And it's hotter this year, you know, at least one past last year. Yes, then you know. I'm a family, you know, blow. Yeah. As you'd expect, even though they're tired. Like yeah, no, we're going to keep coming and fine, but you know, it's been yeah. good. And thanks for, you know, offering me to do it. Okay, so, who is Kai Kamara? <laughs> who is Kai Kamara? Um, I'm me. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm a simple person. You know, Kai Kamara is very simple. You know, born and raised in Kenema, Sierra Leone, and. Uh, ended up becoming a professional soccer player but that happened through hard work um, I put in my time and I've enjoyed it and uh, through the blessings of family members that have you know grown up around I've become the person that I am today but uh, without my family and uh, the friends that I've had growing up in Kenema uh, I would not be the person that I am I won't be Kai Kamara today yeah okay. that's great um, at 14 you moved to the Gambia and later to the USA and to escape the one Syria. So you decided then that you're going to join the LA. We went to LA and to join your mom. Yes. And then you decided to join the local soccer team. Yes. Why soccer? Why soccer? Um, well, yeah, at 14, um, everybody know uh, Sierra Leone had a really brutal civil war, so we left. Um, at 14 when uh, things cooled down a little bit I went to the Gambia and um, stayed there for two years and then finally moved to the to the US to join my mom who has been living in, in the US uh, for about I don't know maybe 15 years then and uh, it was great it was great to finally move to America and I was living in California in Los Angeles and uh, I wanted to play soccer it's it's not just you you grab in a salon, so you play football. So that's really what it is. So when you go to America, everybody expects you to play soccer. And then to me, I decided, okay, I want to play soccer. It was late, actually. The first thing I played when I went to the U.S., I played volleyball. One of my favorite sports. That's what I play. Um, and then later on, I jumped into soccer, and it became my saving grace. Okay. Um, after that, in 2006, uh, when you went to college, you were selected as a part for Columbus Crew. How did you feel? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's all about setting goals, you know, when, when I was in America and uh, a few years later, after playing in college, playing in high school first, and then usually kids play for four years in high school, go to college, play four more years in college, and then get drafted and play professional soccer. But with me in my position, I, uh, I set my goals and I said, I want to achieve these goals. I want to, you know, I'm, I'm in America five years later, I'm playing professional and going two years of school, two years of high school and two years of college. It was just a goal of mine that I wanted to do and said, I want to use that to have the opportunity to play in college. And uh, my mom didn't afford, couldn't afford the money to pay for my college. So I have to play soccer to save me to play and uh, all that worked out and all of a sudden I said by the age of 21 I want to become a professional soccer player and I achieved that one too and I got drafted by Columbus Crew in 2006 so it was it was amazing and uh, I mean 2006 was so far away but it feels like it was just last year so, that's, that's great um, then you actually had to move to Kansas City to play to your soccer career and should I say that's skyrocketed to your soccer career? Uh, it's Kansas City where my soccer career, you know, hit the, the high. Um, I would say part of it, part of it, because uh, being in, in, the, in MLS, playing in MLS, I played before Kansas City. I started in Columbus, and I went to San Jose, then I went to Houston Dynamos, and I finally went to Kansas City. Um, to me, yes, because I grew, and I wasn't a, a young boy anymore, 21, 22. 
playing, I was finally matured and being able to do what I do. And I, I had learned a lot in the earlier stage. So when I moved to Kansas, um, everything just kind of fell into it. And me being from Kenema, a small town boy in Kansas City, uh, Kansas was just this small town. So it just all just worked out perfectly. Until this day, uh, it's my, it's my, it's my second or third. Or, I have so many homes, but it's my other home in America. Okay, that's lovely. Um, now let's come to Sierra Leone. Uh, you're part of the national team, which is the Leon Stars, and you decided to play for Sierra Leone instead of the USA. Why? Yeah, I, 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 I decided to play for Sierra Leone instead of, uh, even though I'm a U.S. citizen, instead of playing for the U.S., I wanted to play for Sierra Leone because of the connection and because of the connection really being born here in, in Sierra Leone and leaving Sierra Leone because of how we left Sierra Leone and growing up in America throughout the whole system in the U.S., it was finally all about how can I be connected to come back home and see my family and friends. Uh, people that I've grown up with, people that you know taught me everything that I knew. Um, so it was an easy decision. You know, it's later on became harder because all the friends that I have in America end up playing for the U.S. and uh, some a lot of opportunities went away. You know, that you really lose a lot when you do make that switch and decide to play for another country than the U.S. And knowing the fact that I was one of the products from uh, from America to be able to play for America, but. I would not change that at all because me coming to Sierra Leone and seeing my family once or twice a year and playing and being able to now be involved in the country so much has really made my career the best it could ever be. Okay. Um, to make it a point of duty to come to Sierra Leone whenever you have the chance to. Describe the feeling you get every time you come in three words. To describe every time I come to Sierra Leone in two words? In three words. Three words? Yes, just three words. Wow. Um, um, two words, I would have said very happy. Um, three words? Very, very happy. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Um, also, who wants to know how you met your wife? How I met my wife? Yes. How I met my wife? Oh my God! Um, soccer, soccer, oh. um, football, and uh, she she's from Kansas, and she worked for um, the 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 Kansas City team, sporting Kansas City. And usually they say don't talk to people that work in the same company, but you can't stop, you know, when something happens. Um, I met her through soccer, I met her through friends, and uh, that was a little over eight years ago, so yeah. Okay. Um, can you know how many kids you have? I have two kids. I have two kids. Uh, my, my daughter is three years old, and my son is one, and uh, yeah, they, they're, they're my everything, and I love them, yeah. Okay. Would you like any of your kids to play football? Would I like any of my kids to play? Um, I, I'm not sure, you know. I mean, if they do, if they want to, I will support them. But I am a person where I'm really open, and soccer is not the only thing I play. I play, like I said, volleyball, basketball, I ran track, and uh, I'm very open. You know, I love to dance, I love to dance. So anything that they want to do, I want to encourage them to do it. I don't want to have them have the focus to say, I want you to play football, I want you to play soccer. That's the only thing I want you to do, obviously. If they become an athlete and want to do that, then great. But I'm not gonna put them in a in a corner, coach them every day, say I want you to be the best soccer player out there. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so, how about the football in Syria? What's your expectation for it in the next two to five years? Yeah, my expectation for, for football and soccer in Sierra Leone has always been the same since the first day I, I came over here. There's potential, there's desire, there's sacrifices that the players and you know the young people make so much how they want, you know, to grow and become, you know, the Mohammed Kalon just like myself and admiring, you know, our legend for so long. But it's a shame to see how how 
the people ahead of football have affected football, you know, for so long, for so many years. And obviously at the moment, um, Sierra Leone is not playing any international games because of the FIFA ban, um, which is good. Me personally, this is probably be the first place I say it. I am really happy that we got that ban because now we we'll get some time to fix the country, fix the football in the country so that it can help the next generation. And when I mean the next generation, I don't mean who's 14 and 16. I mean the kids that's eight years old and 10 years old. It will help to to build a very good sport industry in Sierra Leone. So my vision for Sierra Leone has always been the same and I hope that one day, two years, five years, 10 years from now, we can sit down and say, because we were banned for you know a few months or a year by FIFA, that turned around soccer in the country and it became you know something good. Okay. Thank you so much. But before you go, you're gonna play a little game. Game. Yes. I love games. <laughs> so you have the option of mimicking someone, uh -huh. whether it's the way of the work, uh -huh. and then you have the option of just doing maybe heading a ball or kicking something for it. Oh wow. <laughs> um, I, oh wow, this is uh, it's crazy. I, I do have a ball, but I can't mimic. I can't mimic people the way they walk. <laughs> um, okay, how about, about the talk? The talk. Mimic someone the way they talk. Yes. Who, who, who can I mimic? Someone that we really know. You're not gonna call the name, but from how you sound, we're gonna tell that that's the person. Uh, wait. What's what? Mendema with dignity and quality. No more no that. You see me so? I, uh, uh, um, um, Dake, anytime I can at this country, everybody that watch me like for say, I am, I have, I have pure Mende blood. Pure, pure. <laughs> no, okay. okay, that was good. That was good. <laughs> so thank you That's so funny, much. Man. Do you oh, have man. any last message you want to send to? Um, yeah, last, uh, I got too many messages. If I want to send a message to Sierra Leone, it's too many. Um, but the uh, thing I always say, I say to my fellow Sierra Leoneans, uh, everyone, brother, sister, young, whoever it is, whatever you're doing for Sierra Leone, if you're doing it and you're representing Sierra Leone, you have to do it again for Sierra Leone. It's not about you. It's not about, you know, your family. No you're doing stuff it must be for Sierra Leone and when I look at it I always say recite the national pledge you know when you're pledging you're pledging your love and loyalty to the country Sierra Leone you're not pledging it to you your family you know your friends and this and that so when we do that we will help the country grow and hopefully when we do help the country grow it becomes a better place instead of us putting blames on whoever is trying to help the country grow and you know uh, criticizing somebody else that's trying to do something to help Sierra Leone so together when you're doing something when you're put in a position to help Sierra Leone let's do it for Sierra Leone let's not do it you know for our personal uh, benefits and stuff like that so that's my uh, that's my thing for Sierra Leone thank you very much yeah. and just